this video, I will compare the flight dynamics of the default Cessna 172 Skyhawk and FSX in flight gear to how it behaves in real life. Since I am not a real pilot, I am relying on what I have read online and from talking with a friend who is a licensed pilot. I hope this is as accurate as possible. As I apply power, the plane yaws to the left due to torque effect. I correct this with the rudder to keep the plane straight on the center line of the runway. I accelerate to 55 knots and pull back on the yoke to rotate. Pulling back on the yoke causes the elevator to rise, producing downforce at the tail. This causes the tail to sink, rotating the plane about the vertical axis. The nose rises. The rudder causes the plane to yaw to the right without rolling the plane. As a result, the plane lifts up perfectly straight, both main gear lifting up at the same time. As I apply power, the plane yaws to the left due to torque effect. I correct this with the rudder to keep the plane straight on the center line of the runway. I accelerate to 55 knots and pull back on the yoke to rotate. Pulling back on the yoke causes the elevator to rise, producing downforce at the tail. This causes the tail to sink, rotating the plane about the vertical axis. The nose rises. The rudder causes the plane to yaw to the right without rolling the plane. However, the torque effect applies a rotational force to the fuselage of the plane, causing it to roll. As a result, the plane lifts up on an angle, each gear lifting up one at a time. To correct this, I tilt the yoke slightly to the right. Tilting the yoke to the right causes the ailerons to move such that downforce is generated on the right wing while lift is generated on the left wing, causing the plane to roll to the right. As the pilot applies power, the plane may yaw to the left during takeoff roll, but hardly noticeable due to ground friction, runway quality, winds, including gusts, and the fact that nothing ever goes completely straight in real life. Constant small corrections are needed. In essence, the pilot is just focused on keeping the airplane lined up on the runway. If it is a good calm day and the runway is relatively smooth and dry, the pilot won't be playing with the rudders very much. The pilot accelerates to 55 knots and pulls back on the yoke to rotate. Pulling back on the yoke causes the elevator to rise, producing downforce at the tail. This causes the tail to sink, rotating the plane about the vertical axis. The nose rises. The rudder causes the plane to yaw to the right without rolling the plane. As a result, the plane lifts up perfectly straight, both main gear lifting up at the same time. The torque effect is most noticeable while at low speeds and high power settings. The plane yaws and rolls to the left as I climb. To correct this, simply add some right rudder to center the slip ball. Furthermore, I must tilt the yoke to the right in order to keep the wings level as the rudder does not cause any roll. The torque effect is most noticeable while at low speeds and high power settings. The plane yaws and rolls to the left as I climb. To correct this, simply add some right rudder to center the slip ball. Since the rudder causes the plane to roll, some opposite aileron may be needed to keep the wings level. The torque effect is most noticeable while at low speeds and high power settings. The plane only yaws to the left as the pilot climbs. To correct this, simply add some right rudder to center the slip ball. As I bank the wings, the slip ball indicates the yaw into the turn. To correct, simply add some rudder into the turn. As the pilot banks the wings, the slip ball indicates the yaw away from the turn, then into the turn. At straight and level cruise, only a small amount of rotor and aileron is needed to correct for torque effect, as it is very small at higher speeds and lower power settings. At straight and level cruise, rudder correction is still required. The amount needed is dependent on the weather. A power on stall simulates a stall right after takeoff. This is when you fail to be gentle on the yoke during rotation. Even with full power, full back pressure on the yoke will cause the plane to stall. The plane rolls and yaws to the left once the speed drops while at full power. Once the plane exceeds critical angle of attack, the nose drops. A power on stall simulates a stall right after takeoff. This is when you fail to be gentle on the yoke during rotation. Even with full power, full back pressure on the yoke will cause the plane to stall. The plane rolls and yaws to the left once the speed drops while at full power. The plane never exceeds critical angle of attack with full throttle and full back pressure applied at 55 knots. Instead, it slows down to 50 knots and begins to climb very slowly. A power off stall simulates a stall on approach. With full flaps and zero throttle, it is impossible to maintain altitude for very long. The plane slowly approaches and exceeds critical angle of attack. The nose drops. During recovery, as full power is applied, the plane yaws and rolls to the left.
The missing element in both sims is the airframe shuddering. It is very difficult, if not impossible, to spin the Cessna 172, as the plane is designed to not spin. I have been unable to spin the plane in either sim. Crossing the controls is virtually impossible. If you bank the plane slightly, it wants to turn, even if you apply full counter rudder. Achieving a high sink rate is impossible. When the rudder is kicked full in one direction, the plane not only yaws, but rolls into the turn. Simply add opposite aileron to keep the wings level. The plane is now side slipping, and it's possible to descend at 2,000 feet per minute at only 90 knots. Extending the flaps causes ballooning and sinking. Once properly trimmed, the plane will maintain approach speed regardless of throttle setting without any forward or backward pressure applied to the yoke. Increasing the throttle causes the plane to pitch up and climb. Decreasing the throttle causes the plane to pitch down and descend. Both sims have their faults. Flaker has too much props work, FSX did some serious work in the rudder department. Which one is more realistic? Let's take a look at what we went over. FSX has a slightly more realistic takeoff role. The pilot should not have to take the yoke to keep the wings level during takeoff. Both fail to simulate the climb performance properly, concerning the behavior of the plane due to prop work. Both sims fail to properly simulate the plane's behavior in turns, lacking adverse yaw. Despite weather updates every 10 minutes, flying straight and level on both sims is rather easy. Constant changes in rudder input are not required. FSX nearly nailed the stall behavior, except the airframe did not shudder. I was disappointed with the power on stall behavior in Flake Air. I know I've watched other people do it in Flake Air, but I just couldn't manage for some reason. Maybe someone would like to comment or post a video or response to clear up my confusion here. Both sims got the spin behavior right, as well as the response to flaps and throttle. However, unlike Flake Air, FSX failed to model proper behavior due to rudder input. Looks like we have a tie here for now. If you want to do nearly realistic maneuvers, I'd still recommend Flake Air just because the plane responds properly due to rudder input.